just to overcome the doubt that anybody had of me going number one was just a testament to the hard work that I put in, everybody else around me, you know, believing in me and, you know, being able to live in that moment and hear my name called at number one, it was, you know, something that every little girl should dream about. They tried to count me out, I'ma go count me in, fill up my bank account, now I got something to spend. Growing up in Tennessee was just a little bit because we did move around a lot. It was Tennessee, Kentucky, Florida, Georgia. But it was fun just to having those experiences and, you know, meeting new people and all of those endeavors. Definitely my mom was the first person that, you know, introduced me to basketball. Um, a lot of people don't know that she played collegiately at Florida and even on higher levels than that. But, you know, she's always been there coaching me, you know, supporting me, whatever the case may be, and just putting me in good situations to be successful. Even when she was coaching me, if you ever played for a parent, I applaud you. But it's just great to have her there because, you know, obviously she knows all of my goals. She's done what I want to do. Well, not now, because I've surpassed her. Love you, Mom. You know, I can talk to her about anything, whether she understands it or not. Um, she's always there whenever I need her. With the first pick in the 2022 WNBA draft, the Atlanta Dream select Ryan Howard from the University of Kentucky. Being able to live in that moment and hear my name called at number one, it was you know something that every little girl should dream about. It was definitely a roller coaster of emotions. Just to overcome the doubt that anybody had of me going number one was just a testament to the hard work that I put in. Everybody else around me, you know, believing in me and not even putting the pressure on me to think that I was less than number one or as less than what I believed that I was myself. So obviously my first year was pretty great for me, but I knew that I can do more than what I did in my first year. And so people can see that I'm confident in my game, it radiates, but I'm not gonna do like a whole lot of chatter. Like I'm not gonna do like a whole lot of hyping myself up. This confidence comes with having another player like Leisha on the floor, having my teammates also being confident in themselves and me seeing that continue to have this success is just like, okay, I've had success, so I'm gonna keep doing it. You wanna know my joke? Yeah. Okay. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Surprise! <laughs> Thank you. When I first came into the league, I would say that I was kind of shy, honestly, going from being that girl on your collegiate team to now running sets for Becky Hammond and Ruth Riley and Sophia Young Malcolm. It's kind of like, oh wow, like taking a step back. But they really taught me how to lead. They taught me how to grow my voice on and off the court and to just really be myself. And so I could say, I think the biggest thing from when I was young to now is that I'm so authentically myself. I'm gonna come in every day with a smile, no matter good, bad, ugly, because I know that not only am I depending on it, but my teammates are. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gonna call and collect. Blessings on playing style is fast. I would say defensively, I like to really hawk the ball. I think that's a great starting point for a defensive possession when your teammates are looking at you and see that energy that you have on the ball. I would say that I'm a unselfish player, very pass first point guard that likes to get downhill, get to the rim, but also make those extra passes to uh, the star players. <laughs> Before the season even started, um, Tommy said, I met D-Rod today. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know who I was, but I fangirled a little bit. And then I think from there, like, reached out. Obviously, you know, we're watching when she was playing overseas uh, before the season started, just supporting. And um, once she got back into town, it was like we had been friends forever. One area today. They've gotten a lot of points in the paint, Tabitha, but they've not been able to <laughs> shoot the three like that. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, Ryan, nobody is ever going to speed her up. Like, she plays at her own pace, and that's... You know, sometimes in the game when everybody's going super fast, like Ryan will just dribble the ball and literally slow everybody down. And so I think that's a special talent to have, especially in a league where she's seeing two, three, four defenders sometimes, all kinds of defenses. She's a really, really special player. I would say it's just great to have that vet 
around in terms of experience. She's obviously been around a lot of you know, championship teams and just overall great players. So just to have her to learn from and just to hear her insight on things that we as a team don't have because we're so young is just great to have. For Ryan, I mean, yes, yeah, her second year, but she plays way older than she is. Ryan is able to create so well. Um, like I said, through sometimes two, three defenders that I think getting the ball to her is probably the most important thing. So sometimes it's about helping her get open, but also just getting her the ball in those moments. So after EDG goes down, obviously there was a lot of talk about me originally being one. I knew they would have to sub and I had an idea that it would be me. I was with Nas when Kathy called me and you know we were both just excited just to actually hear it and it to be true that I was going to be an all-star for the second year in a row. Always grateful for the opportunity and it was just fun to be out there and you know be around different players who I'm not seeing every day, who I'm not hanging out with every day and just having that experience again and sharing that experience with CP and Leash as their first time all-stars was this year too. Three All-Stars definitely solidifies the fact that we can be a good team. Like all the top teams had multiple All-Stars and you know, in my opinion, if this course stays together, we should be All-Stars every year. That's the center I have for us as a team. The only pressure being an All-Star every year is what I put on myself. Like nobody else has put that on me and I try to hold myself to that standard. I'm an All-Star and everybody around me eyes whether I get named it or not. Self-care for me is taking time with myself. Like, I like to draw, I'm learning the piano, and I play video games. So if I can find time to do all those things and have time for myself, anything away from the game that gets my mind away from the game, away from you know what happens inside those four lines is self-care to me. Drawing is another world in itself for me because it's like I don't have to talk to anybody, I can just do it, it's just me and the paper and the pencil. So what's easiest for me is like cartoon stuff or like something simple because, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. I'll ask somebody like, hey, what should I draw? Or I'll go on Pinterest and just find something. I like to just hang out. I like to be alone, but most of the time I'm with Leash, most of the time I'm with Nas. Even if we're not doing anything, just being there in their presence is, you know, comforting for me. I like to, you know, get my nails done, obviously, get my lashes done, but just, you know, live life, be a normal person. First of all, shout out to Adrian, my stylist. She definitely helped me put all those together. I told her like, hey, I just want to be comfortable, but I want to be cute. And so she took that and ran with it. And so definitely, yes, like I can put these together. I could add pizzazz to them, um, but I just want to be comfortable. Yeah, I think for me, my same would have to be my hair. Um, it's always been my hair, I think, since I came into the league. I came in the league with red locks and color was always my thing. I think once I got to be an adult, my mom didn't have an opinion on what I could do with my hair anymore, but um, definitely my, my hair is my statement. I love this team. I love this team um, from the top down. Um, our leadership is incredible. Um, our support staff, obviously the players, but it's also about the culture. We have a lot of funny people. Literally, I feel like if I need to laugh, I'm looking at Ryan first because I know <laughs> she's gonna do something. <laughs> she's gonna do something crazy that's gonna make me laugh. I feel like I can get along with anybody and just bring that out of them because you know I like to have a lot of fun. It takes away from any other stress or it takes away from things that you might have to deal with on the court. You know, creating a comfortable place and a safe environment was definitely key to our whole team success. If one person is down, then the whole team's gonna be down. And so if I'm, you know, high energy locked in focused then the whole team is going to be looking at me and like okay like yeah we're having fun today like today's going to be a good time atkins attacking has it blocked from howard Both events, i think it it does help the league because it brings that sense of competitiveness a lot of people think that oh everybody's so friendly but i feel like even if you are friends you don't have friends on the court unless they're your teammates so after the game you know we can hug it out we can do this we can do that 
it will definitely start bringing a lot more attention to the game than what we have now. Uh, Atlanta as a city is definitely, you know, one of one. It's honestly been my favorite place. Um, there's just a different type of energy that's here in Atlanta. The support is amazing. And so running out in front of these fans every single night, we always know it's going to be a party. It's going to be a good time. Um, from the DJs to the fans doing the wave, swag surf, all that. The music scene, you're going to get whatever you want, um, whenever you want here in Atlanta. It's so diverse. There's all kinds of music fans and there's all kinds of music that comes through Atlanta. And I think that's a big thing. You're going to catch whatever concert you want to throughout the summer, even throughout the entire year, just because it's such a musical hub. The camaraderie is like everybody in Atlanta wants to see everybody win. So we want to support football, we want to support soccer, we want to support the Atlanta Open, and you know they're supporting us as well. Like Trey came to a game. Yes, I got onto him about coming to more games. And the Hawks have tweeted about us. The Braves have tweeted about us, and it's just you can see how close knit we all are. The rookie of the year, shooting guard. So for the Atlanta first pitch Dream. was definitely fun. Um, I did practice a little bit before I threw it, but you know I could say that you know a lot of people said I had the best pitch. So I mean, nothing else needs to be said. Staying in touch with the fans is important because you know obviously they can't come to every game, they can't be around you like every second of every day, and so you definitely have to stay in touch with the fans, especially for growth of the game. If we want to keep bringing fans, you have to show them that you love them as much as they love you. And I'm D-Rob. And we're made for the A.